Today we are going to observe Matt trying to build a bridge. Even though he's an engineering student, he still struggles with basic shapes. So the plan for today is I'm going to build this bridge and then I'm just going to kind of place it in the mountains over a river probably because there's one that kind of like snakes up into the mountains. So I think that's where we're going to put it. Now, when I think of a train bridge, I think of those truss bridges. So it's essentially just a bunch of steel. So first things first, let's go into the city of Monstera and we're going to go to the northwest corner of the island. Up in this corner of the island, it's basically all mountains and these like really dramatic valleys. So I don't want to place it too deep into the mountains because I want to keep a lot of it as like a national park, which, you know, we'll work on later. Oh, check this out. That's a cool spot right here. I think this might be the place we're going to put it. So if we zoom out on the map, it goes like right here. This is where we're kind of looking at. I'm going to go ahead and set a home here so I don't forget where it is. And then let's jump into drawing. First things first, I'm going to draw this kind of little box here to represent the river. And then I'm going to draw little outlines in green just to show a bit of the terrain. Before we go ahead and plan this thing out, I want you to take a look at this bridge right here. So this is what I mean by a truss bridge. And you can see along this bridge that it's divided into different segments. At the end of each segment, you can observe that there's a support that holds it up. Going towards the support, you can see that you have a diagonal beam on either side, and then it kind of zigzags across. On the sides, you can see that there is one flat beam going right across the bottom, and then there's another one up top. Up top, you can see that there's kind of an X that crosses it for your lateral support. And then on the bottom, you can see that there's this thing called a deck. Typically, this deck is just made of wood, and then you can put your rails on top of it. So for this bridge, I'd like to have it in three segments. So one of these segments will completely cross the river. And then since the slope isn't very steep, we're going to need probably one segment on either side on top of that. So what I end up doing at the end of each side of this bridge is completely dependent on two things. The first is how high above the ground I actually want this bridge. And then the second thing is kind of dependent on the first, but it depends on the terrain height. Okay, so for the bottom horizontal element, uh, I think all the way across, I'm going to go with two blocks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and outline the elevation view for each of the three segments. Along each span of the bridge, I'm going to have four vertical segments. And then between each of these vertical segments, I'm going to have sort of this like V shape. Boo, give us Minecraft. Sure, no problem, impatient stickman. Okay, so let's jump into Minecraft here. I'm gonna go ahead and build this glass table, and then basically we're just gonna build the bridge on top of it and then work from there. I wanna use something like light gray, so I think I'm gonna go with nether bricks, nether brick stairs, and some nether brick slabs. I think for the deck, I'm gonna go with spruce planks. For this first width here, I'm gonna go with 13 because the width of the bridge needs to be about 15 blocks on the deck. It needs to be 15 because the rails and the uh, what do you call them? Railroad ties are five across and we're going to have two tracks plus on either side I want one block and then in the middle I want to have three blocks. Sorry my mind's all over the place those two things aren't actually correlated but I am going to use 15 wide for the deck. Welcome back to watching Matt get confused by his own build. Today we observe him in his natural habitat not understanding how to count. Okay sorry about that the actual reason why we need it to be 13 is because we need the diagonal segment. So since I'm using stairs, it's not just going to be like one across, we actually need two. And the reason for choosing the number 13 for this horizontal segment is actually a factor of how tall we actually need it. So the distance from the deck to the very top beam is going to be 13 blocks inclusive. If we take away the top and the bottom, it's now 11. Since we're going to have the rail set on top of the deck, we can take away one more and the clear space for the train becomes 10 blocks. Wow, good job, Matt. Congratulations. Right, so I'm just going to double up the bottom here and then I'm going to add some stairs to make it more visually interesting. Now that that's all done, I'm going to go ahead and add the stairs going up diagonally and then I'm going to add that vertical member. Now that this one triangle is done, it's going to be way easier to do the rest of the bridge. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to flip it this way and then I'm just going to paste it. Whoops, got to fix that. So now I'm going to pull this horizontal segment across and then I'm going to get confused for the next 30 seconds. Here we see the wild Matt getting confused by basic geometry. It's just triangles, Matt. It's not that hard. Right, now that I've figured out how triangles work apparently, I'm just going to take it, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to flip it, and then I'm just going to paste it. Wow, look at that. Starting to look like a bridge. So now my plan is to extend this out right here, and then I'm just going to take this whole thing, and I'm going to copy it, and then flip it to the other side, and then we get one full segment. 
Right, so now that I see it, it's pretty close to those trees. So I think I'm just going to take it and then move it up. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Oh, can't forget about this. Got to bring that up too. All right, that's better. I think it's starting to look like a bridge. Just going to double check to make sure that these are 11. Yeah, okay, it looks good. Yeah, you, you just check that you don't need to do it. Okay, we're doing it again. Okay, it is time to make the rest of the bridge. So let's go ahead with our spruce planks and we're gonna pull this 15 across and then I'm just gonna add these little indents where the train tracks aren't actually over top of. At the bottom of the diagonal segments or the vertical segments, I am going to add these girders that go all the way across. And since this one doesn't have a center, I'm going to do a double block right here. I'm also gonna go ahead and add these slabs that act as the joists underneath the deck, but I need them to be symmetrical down the center of the bridge so that they don't look weird. So I think that's a little bit too far apart. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put one in the center and then have them like this. So I'm gonna take them and I'm just gonna pull them to the other side. Now, since it's gonna be pretty well identical the entire span of the bridge, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna copy it to the other side and then I'm just gonna stack it to the next girder. I'm gonna take the bottom section and then just put it on the other side just to give it a little more structure. Okay, so I think it looks good. So let's take it and stack it down the bridge. So for our next step, let's go ahead and copy that segment. We're gonna flip it and then we're just gonna paste it onto the other side. So I'm not gonna waste my time just filling in the entire deck real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna design the rail template. Oh, that's loud, sorry. I'm gonna use anvils for the railway and then spruce slabs for the railway ties. For the template that I'm using for the rest of my city, I'm using gaps of two and then the railway ties are just one. This means that the stackable area is three wide. Right, so it's ready to go here with the three wide segment. So I'm gonna select it and then just stack it all the way down to the end of the bridge. So it does go over the edge a little bit. So when I am stacking this whole thing, I just have to make sure that it lines up. Or since it is attached to the deck of the bridge, maybe I just won't care enough and maybe I'll just leave it. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the top of the bridge here. So at the top of each of the vertical members, I'm going to take it and then I'm just gonna make it go across with the nether bricks. Now at the very top, I want to have an X that crosses through each of these sections. So I'm going to do G mask zero. So it only replaces the air with world edit. And then with the nether brick slab in my hand, I'm going to do double slash line space hand. That gives us this diagonal that goes across. And I'm just going to select the other corners, do the same thing, and then just stack it all the way down. Just kidding. I'm going to use world edit and the line command because it's fun and I never get to use it. There we go. How does that look? Looks like we have ourselves a bridge. Okay, now here comes a bit of a challenge. So I wanna make this bridge on a four to one ratio in the horizontal. So to do this at the bottom and the top, I'm gonna to take black and light gray wool, and I'm just gonna create this pattern that just crosses each side. Now, the reason for doing this is that each of these little bars will be a segment that I will select with world edit and then just use the move command to shift it. Now, here's the fun part of the video where you get to watch me struggle for almost four minutes straight because I don't realize that I have a G mask on. Once again, here we are watching Matt struggle with the basics of world edit. Good job, Matt. It's not like you've been using world edit for the past eight years. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna select the top right corner of this one. I'm gonna fly all the way down here and then select the bottom left-hand corner of this one right here. I'm not going all the way over because I'm not moving this segment on the left. And since I keep my position one at that original spot, I can just select the left-hand side of the next segment for position two and then just move it one south again. And now is the fun part where I just get to spam the same command for the entire length of the segment. Wow, congratulations, you figured it out. Right, so let's fly up here and, okay, so you see this X here? So we have to go back and fix that. But before we do that, I'm going to remove all these markers that we were using. And I also may have built it the wrong way, but no big deal because I have world edit. So I'm gonna select it, I'm going to flip it, and then I'm just gonna paste it. So now for some reason, I've decided to make my life difficult and not fix it and then paste it. I've decided to just go ahead and try and line it up with the river. Today we observe Matt making his life more difficult for himself. Okay, okay, I get it. Can you leave me alone? 
No, I will not until you stop making mistakes. I'm sorry, are, are you a talking moose? Right, so just a quick clean light command here, and yep, that's a bridge. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the edges here where the diagonals go down and there's nothing on top, and then just make sure that it lines up with the bottom here where I want it on the terrain. Because if you remember from earlier, these sections are where I wanna have the support pillars and I don't want them to go into the river. So it lines up, so let's go ahead and fix our bridge. Since I decided to use stairs on the side, when I shifted the bridge, it's gonna create these little openings. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fix them. So aside from that top part, I think the bridge looks pretty good. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to move it down towards the terrain. I need to get it at a point where the end of the bridge is pretty well connecting to the terrain, but I can't have the actual height of the bridge over the river be too big or too slow. What am I talking? Too slow? What? Too small. It can't be too small. Now that it's roughly in place, I'm going to take my polygon selector tool with world edits, and I'm just going to take out all the leaves and the extra trees. I'm not trying to take out any of the greenery underneath, so just trees and just the leaves. Now I have decided to ignore the giant X on top that clearly needs to be fixed and I'm gonna make the support pillars. I want the width of these pillars to be one more than the width of the bridge. And then I'm just gonna make it look like a bit of a rounded corner. Let's stack it up by 15 for a total of 16 and then I'm just going to give it a bit of texture. Right, so we're almost done. Let's go and paste our support. Nope, just kidding. You need to slant this too. Okay, now we can paste them in. Since I used the move command to change the shape of this bridge, it's actually skewed rather than rotated. This means that as I paste these pillars in, I have to go two to the right to make them line up. So yeah, it looks a little bit weird if you look too close, but I think it looks fine. There we go. Okay, so let's look at the top of the bridge again. I'm going to use world edit. I'll take out the slabs and then I'll just replace the X's going all the way across. Wow, okay, that was a lot of work, but I think it looks pretty good. I think if I were to try and build it again, maybe I'd try and rotate it rather than skew it. But to be honest, I'm still not really sure how to approach it. If we switch to default, I mean, it's very purple. So maybe I'd try and use something a little bit more gray. If I were to build this in default, I would probably use a combination of stone stairs and andesite stairs for the diagonal sections and just regular stone and andesite for the rest of it. Or if you wanted to make it look a little more shiny, then I don't know, maybe you could use like polished andesite stairs or something. I think if I had to choose a favorite spot, it would be right here. It's kind of tucked between the two segments. You have the support underneath for some cool complexity. And then you have this nice like rolling hill with the forest in the background. So I guess my favorite spot's more dependent on the scenery around it rather than the bridge itself. But you know, it's still a nice spot. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, if you don't mind taking a second just to click like, the interaction will tell the YouTube algorithm to show this video to more people. If this is your first time seeing my videos, it would be great if you would consider subscribing, but if you're still not convinced, feel free to check out my channel. And as usual, thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping to make this possible. They start at $3 a month and it gives early access to videos and credit at the end of each video.